show in the group. Correct. Uh, Cody Topman. Uh, I can't tag Cody, so I'm just going to write his name. Yeah, both these guys are just sorting something out because it's their first time playing on the server. Hey, how is my sound right now? Yeah, it sounds perfectly fine. Okay, that's good. Well, they're, oh. they're playing on xmage.us. Ah, yeah, uh, one of those is... Uh, which format is it? Ah, uh, standard first. Okay, on oh, password it. Yeah, it's called Test League. Oh wait, one guy just left for some reason. Two yeah. guys left. <laughs> uh, where, where did it go? Okay, fast game, fast game. Let me just check. I'm in. I might also not notice everything in real time because I, I think the game is back up. Because right now I am also in a drop. Yay. In a what? In the draft. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're going to yeah, switch back and forward. Uh, if anyone's listening, that this is uh, Eric Heldren. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, they're all set. So it's going to be Cody Topman against Nick Peterson. Uh, Nick Peterson is Fathom Lolo, I think it's called. Fathom okay. Lolo, the creator of the game. Yeah. Well, either way, they're both new, so I won't really know them. Yeah, this, yeah this is from the New Players League, so Cody uh, luckily jumped in late to fill that last position that we needed. Ah, oh, nice. Uh, but there's a bit of a... Yeah, it'll be interesting to see standard first. Um, out of all the, all, I played my league matches today, and out of the other ones that I've also commentated on, it's been that Grixis. I don't know if you call it Grixis energy in standard every single time. So, uh, Grixis value deck. Yeah, I, I suppose it's, it's. I think it's considered the best deck in standard at the moment, isn't it? So, yeah. kind of makes sense. The 
funny thing is also like the thing that it has the most problem with is control and because the format is new few players are choosing to go for control because um yeah it's hard to control a meta that isn't actually defined yet yeah and, and i was testing the, the standard the other day with uh, dylan magica because uh, he he wants to test his grixis you call it grixis value um and i so i was using control largely approach decks and it's really easy to win game one i, I think game one's unwinnable for that grixis deck against con uh, particularly the approach decks but I, I just couldn't get them after sideboard once they bring in duress and some mm -hmm. other counter spells it's too difficult yeah so perhaps a, an, uh, an approach deck that chooses to go for a slightly different strategy could work like that can side into a different strategy yeah I, I might play around with a um like an esper approach rather than just straight blue white so that i can have duress and some other black removal as well yeah i've also seen like a band approach with uh, the ramp spells and like being both a ramp deck and the, an approach deck yeah kind of... um I, I think bob dibonese plays around with that I'm not sure what these guys are doing. It's like five minutes ago the game was created. Yeah. We're, we're um, waiting for Cody. Hmm. Yeah. I, I, did you have a chance to look at the the link that I posted for that guy um, that I interviewed for the podcast? Not sure. Probably. Like, <laughs> Okay, yeah, they're all set, What's so it's going to be Cody Topman against... What's off topic from the... What's his... I f something mage. Um, I can't remember what his name is now. Was that the team? Okay, they're in, they're in... The league match can start now. They're dueling. Where okay. are they? There. Yep. Jump in here and have a look. Get the hands up. So it's going to be Cody, Reign of Chaos on the top. And... Uh, Cody Topman on the top and Nick Peterson on the bottom. Yep. Yeah, the podcast this week that's coming out on Monday was really interesting. It's um, Jewelcaster Mage is his website, jewelcastermage.com. He he does he started out in about September August September last year with kind of no knowledge of video processing or anything like that and just sort of googled around and taught himself and the way he presents now it's it's really good it's one verse one commander but, oh, yeah. but but he says it takes him about four to five hours to edit each video but um yeah. the I've final heard that editing is really a lot of shit to do with um Like, if you, like, go to the behind-the-scenes videos of, uh, like, Command Zone or something like that, it's... Editing is apparently the worst. So we've got a... Unclaimed Territory is going to be a... Oh, he's chosen me if okay, okay, yep. I was going to say it's a tribal deck. Um, on screen at the moment, I, it looks like Saltai with the two... Or the Winding Constrictor, but the Saltai deck... Okay, so so um, just to get these names, um, Nick Peterson at the bottom of the screen is on Merfolk up against Saltai. The, the Saltai hand is a bit um, weak. Uh, okay, I, for a moment I thought you were uh, one of the the Merfolk deck was actually also a Saltai deck. That would have been interesting. <laughs> I, I do think like that you could actually splash black in Merfolk for better removal. But I'm not sure whether that would actually work out well enough. Yeah, the, the Merfolk deck's really cool. I just net decked it for the... I think we had an F&M standard a week or so back, and I played it. Um, it. It works really well, but if you don't get your tempo, like you're on summon or something like that, it's it's not that fantastic. But just yeah. looking at the Saltai hand here, he's got a Verter Verterous Gearhulk on turn 5, 
an an essence scatter which is obviously tapped out at the moment so i think this might be a bit slow against the merfolk in game one Yeah, like, they have some broken hands with, like, the Rishka after thing, but that doesn't look like what it, what's going to happen today. Well, one thing that has been happening off the league is um, the matches seem to be very fast compared to, you know, previous seasons. Generally, the three games are over in an hour. I, I, I think an hour and a half is the longest one I've done. Yeah, I do remember like some matches being a lot longer than that. Yeah, you know, some of the nightmares from last year, uh, last season, two or three hours long. Now, Merfolk is really getting a good start, but I'm not sure whether, like, if Constrictor can get some big things in the way, it's going to be a lot harder for Merfolk to break through, unless they have a Kumina and can get value on the. Uh, yeah, and you see, he's kind of in an awkward spot because one constrictor is checking three of his four creatures, uh, so he can't really be pushing the damage at the moment. Also, it will be interesting to see for which kind of tempo that uh, the Merfolk deck is going for. As I personally have played with um, the uh, expertise. Ah, oh, yeah, the Barals. Yep, Baral's expertise, and others have also uh, chosen to go for, um, like, the you've got the 4 mana Merfolk that taps each creature your opponent controls, which is really good. And usually there's some way for tempo to win. And it does seem like you have actually a different version of Merfolk being the, the one where you uh, get. I'll just I'll tag you in a in the post for this, so you don't need to be distracted. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the version I played, I think I think it had a blue one drop that can't be is unblockable. Oh and, yeah, that. That one was really good, and then when you you tag it with Kamina, because Kamina can make herself unblockable as well. Uh, you just kind of load those two creatures up with the counters and, and push it through. But it looks like the Saltai, um, Cody missed a land drop there, did he? Oh no. Uh, there's also a version that uses the deep root water to just go wide and then, like, it's not uh, as aggressive as most Merfolk decks, but it, uh, it is a lot better against mid range decks and single removal than. Uh, the other ones because that's something that is kind of problematic with Merfolk at the moment is that they tend to die pretty hard to a couple of removal spells like continuous removal spells yeah and one thing here we haven't seen any removal spell from um, Cody just yet the essence scatters in the grave but um, he's gonna take s at least six here he could possibly take eight uh, yeah, he's, he's saying he's getting flooded because he's going to have Verderous Gearhulk and Scarab God options next, but I think it's going to be a turn too late. Mm -hmm. He really needed to find like a fatal push or something off that cycling. I think Merfolk's yeah. just gone too wide in this first game. Early interaction is really important here because right now they could just as well draw Merfolk that lets them push da damage through. And it's going to be very hard for the constrictor deck to deal with although, although i i think right uh nick made a i don't know why i keep calling him ryan peterson i don't know if i know a ryan peterson it's nick peterson um i think he made a mistake there only swinging that the one the four four because if he swung them all he would have forced a, a block but he would have pushed through three four, four an extra six damage and put him to one and he would have been too wide this turn yeah yeah definitely i think you should have gone the more aggressive route there um, trying to get through all the damage you can because you're in a good position. Because n now he's faced with the option, the same situation he had last turn, except this time he's going to lose his two biggest creatures if he wants to push. Yep. And you see he's starting to flood out now. Now, if he had the unblockable, Hash of Oasis could push through quite a lot of damage, which is also why I really like that one drop. 
but um, doesn't seem to be playing it. Preferring the Jade Bearer instead. Yeah, I, th I think he's just adding up. If he wants to put, yeah, put the three three on one and one ones, and try and push the damage. Yeah, well, is going for a big one, big Kuna speaker, to try and. Uh, that's a seven, so th th that's going to be a. Oh, it's going to trade, I guess. Yep. So he'll push through four damage here, put him to three. Yep. Uh, see, I, I think if he did this last turn, it'll be game over for sure now. Yep. I think if he took your route, which was more aggressive, that would have way better. Would have been way better. Well then, yeah, Cody's. So apparently... Cody's going to have one, two, go drop to three, but he have two blockers next turn. Well, one blocker perhaps with, well, actually, if near Deadlands can take out another creature, so it might, it's actually looking quite bleak for the Merfolk deck here. Yeah, I, th I think he's got to run the Scarab God here. Yeah, so... Uh... Nick Peterson at the bottom of the screen really needs to pull a another creature minimum. Only one damage will be left, of course. So if he's able to get some unblockable creature, he can just push through to get the two damage, and then that will be all he needs to have. Yeah, did the wrong one. Draw. Yeah, so this is going to drop him to one, but then it'll be two on two creatures. So we'll see what he draws for the turn. And Scarab's God's going to start activating as well. So that'll be adding a how many creatures are in the graveyard. There's a silver gill adept there. One, two, th there's three creatures in the Merfolk graveyard. So at least for next, and a Verdurus Gearhulk. So I think this match is gone now. He's going to push and drop him to one, but he's only got to add one creature to the board to, to stabilize this. Yep. This isn't looking too good for that. Which he can do every turn from the Scarab God, and he would he would block the two creatures rather than the, than the token, although he's going to block the token. Just to put more fodder for Scarab God. Yeah, he's changed the block now. Down to one, but it's a pretty safe one. Yep. Now a single Kunin I could make just like lethal next turn unless he draws a removal but and if he does play the blue one drop that will also be enough to push through damage. Then again, the problem with that is that if near Deadlands could actually take it, take him out. Yeah, because K Kamina can tap three m merfolk. to make itself unblockable and push through the last point of damage. No. The Kamina would be enough because even with Ishna Deadland, uh, it would enter with another plus one plus one counter from the Dark Mage. So it would actually remain at one, then it could tap the Merfolk and just slash relete all of them. Wait, what happened there? <laughs> he he tapped his lands wrong and he's died. Oh my god, he tapped <laughs> that, That's an... Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, he could reverse it. I was going to say, wow. Yeah, Imagine losing was, the game like yeah. that. That he's, he's gonna, Did he do it again? He's done it again. He's going to lose the match. Yeah, so, <laughs> so Nick, Nick Peterson is going to take game one because he tapped it twice. He, he, he was warned the first time by the system and he did it again. Because the yep. Ethan Deadlands, you've got to pay one life to tap it for black. And I wasn't even aware you could actually. Oh, well, yeah, I guess you could like pay one life. To it, it's it's kind of like uh, that situation, j j just to clarify. Um, particularly for new players with regards to our league rules. Uh, that is entirely legal and valid what just happened. Um, 
there's no there's no issues there whatsoever it's like at a gp if you you're down to one life and you crack a a fetch land you, you're just dead you can't turn around and say oops i i didn't realize and i i, I guess what's particularly incriminating from there is that it, he, he had a chance he like reversed it and the system let him do it again and then he still went and tapped it again yeah I guess this is something you can only expect in the new player at least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. Um, th th that was Cody Topman with the mistake there. Um, they did mention to me that they haven't played on a server before, so I, I don't know if they're actually new players or they're just new to the server. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Update from the drought, by the way, I've ended up in Sultai. <laughs> kind of really weird. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Hello. Is that Bob? Yes, it is. How are you guys doing? Very good, good. thanks. How are you? Super, just enjoying a lazy Saturday. Figured I'd drop in and say hi. Thanks. If you want to jump in and join us, we're in the xmage.us server. Oh, absolutely. I'm. Uh, I saw the stream was up, so I'm. I'm in watching the same game with you guys. Oh, fantastic! Th three commentators now. Yep, with one of them drafting. <laughs> so I saw one person was on what was it like blue or uh, black green constrictor, and the other was on merfolk. It's salt I can stick to, I believe. Okay. But yeah, for us it was correct. And it looked like the Merfolk player overwhelmed the Constrictor player? Well, yeah, yeah we, we had a bit of a calamity at the end of that one because the Constrictor player was probably in the match winning position. He was down to one life, but he had a Scarab God and had the board completely stabilized. And then, uh, with that one life, went and tapped his uh, if in the Deadlands for a black mana and killed himself. That's really unfortunate. You got to be careful. <laughs> Some, something for the blooper reel at the end of the season. Yeah, definitely. A uh, a painful lesson to learn, but hopefully it doesn't happen again. We just see he's got two trooper cards. He's got a lot of uh, removal this time, so. He didn't have that last time. We'll see how, how this match goes. I'll just check the hand for the Merfolk player. Really, I'm thinking that this matchup, as long as the Sultai Constrictor deck draws removal, should be pretty straightforward. Yeah, I think so too, but um, that won't always happen, of course. And that's why we play the game. But I was I was playing a deck the other day because uh, I think it's the Heship, um yeah the he when I was playing with the Merfolk and I kept losing life as well and I, I wasn't sure why because I didn't pay attention to the lands either. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it kind of makes sense. It, it'd be a bit overpowered if it was just a uh, lets you tap for green and lets you pump a creature. Right. We have another um, pain land here in the form of Hash of Oasis. Just hope it not doesn't lose the same game the same way as before. <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of the opposite this time. Like um, it, he's he, before he had threats and no removal. Now he's got removal, no threats. Well, that's kind of a nasty position to be in, especially because he had actually a servant of the combo with turn two, and that he would love to have that turn into a turn for big shit like I'm, I'm assuming he plays Hydra I'm not sure because some versions also play Super Cabra in a 4 drop yeah he's got two Super Cabras there in his hand but you can see the Merfolk player's got Kamina this time yeah. quite an aggressive hit there with Kamina speaking what is oh, it he... sorry there's some oh. f funny noise coming through the mic oh that might actually be wait how can I Put that off because it might be for my drafts. Yeah. Okay. 
that should do it. So the Sultai player's hand looks really dangerous for the Merf Merfolk player. Yeah. Uh, and and you, you can see the Merfolk player's in this really awkward position because he, he wants to play tempo. He had his metallic mimic there, but he's holding up essence scatter. Oh. Which kind of wrecks the whole tempo plan. Yeah, I think I would still... But then again, with a seven of Gomri on the battlefield, it might actually be good to keep up essence scatter because it's really problematic. Yeah, because and he... He'll actually it, be rewarded here, I think. I, I guess he's worried about the turn four Scarab God. Well, that would be... Well, this is going to be a test. We'll see if this brings out the counter. I think so. I mean, Super Cabra here is pretty irritating, so... Now, I think that a handful of removal should normally be good to deal with Merfolk. But on the other hand, um, it's all really expensive removal. Yeah, and so he's he's going to be tapping. Like you can see, he doesn't have a land in hand at the moment, and he's got one um, one energy left. So he can't actually think, play anything of any of that removal because he needs double black. I think <coughs> he just played Kumana here to do the uh, mana efficient route, and then play to. Um, boards the next turn. I think that would would have been a better play here. Now, he can actually the um, reign of chaos will actually still be able to use his um, walking ballista to get some things through. But I think Vinsley Siphon is probably better here. Well, so. I, I think he's just weighing up because if he uses a glint sleeve siphoner, it's going to take his last energy, and then he's at least two turns away from using his removal. Yeah, on the other hand, Green Sleeve Siphoner can be played and played next turn, and then he can play removal because he will gain he will gain another energy from the. He'll actually gain another energy from the um, the Green Sleeve Siphoner entering the battlefield. I can only see um, Brain of Chaos's hand and, and not uh, Fathoms, so uh, it's kind of awkward for me. Uh, did you right click on both the top and bottom? Now I have. So he's cho chosen to use that. Um, last energy to play out the glint sleeve siphoner which will net him another energy allowing him yep. to get even in some way ah, and then he chooses to actually play walking blister for one to take down the metallic i actually quite like this play here simply because metallic mimic is a bitch <laughs> yeah because the, the merfolk player is just a simple 2-2 two -two sitting on the other side he can forced because the, the, the merfolk player has to kind of keep up the tempo and keep being aggressive so he can't really hang back so the, the glint leaf siphon has menace he's going to require two creatures hanging back to cover him i'll be right back <sighs> has him down to 14 on that attack. No, that's still a safe life total, but I think the mana issues are more of a problem here. Tito push is good draw though. Can you really use it? I guess you could next turn perhaps block the Kumina speaking of Tito push the uh, Kumina. But that is if Atom is going to attack.
Are we just drawing cards here? Yeah, I don't think so. I think we want to keep that. Oh, no, don't do it. No, 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 what's happening? No! Ouch. That is newbie play. <laughs> that was unfortunate. No, he can still play his board and then I think I would draw a card there. Yeah, this is actually like now certain the conduit can block Kumina speaker and fatal push to Kumina and I think that is going to be pretty much game. Unless it doesn't happen of course. Man, that was really unfortunate. Yeah. Of course, I am acting on uh, complete information, so it might be a thing to have more. But I definitely would have blocked with Servant and then Fatal Push <coughs> coming up. So I think it's just such a big tempo swing. <coughs> okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, three commentators here, and one of them's playing a draft, and the other one is constantly being banned. Yeah, I think Matt needs to learn how to use the mute. Yeah, probably. So this spot right here is exactly where Fathom didn't want to be. That one command is going to get killed. He would have had the second one in hand. Yep. Things are not as good as they could be. Definitely not. But he's he's still got some live draws. He's got some options. He's yep. keeping pressure on. It's not the end of the road. Yep. He can get a little froggy here too if he wants to. Yep. He's waiting for next turn to get froggy. That's totally fine as well. So Rain's got some pretty live removal. Um, if he draws another land, he's going to have a really good turn next time he I wants to spend his mana. Drawing a swamp here would be just the best for him right now. And that's unfortunate. He is getting beat up by his land. So luckily the Jade, the Jade Light Ranger could help him get back in. Um, pulling the land off of that would be pretty good pretty good for him, especially if it's a swamp. Yep. And he is going to get in with the glint sleeve. He's got to clean up his fixing a little bit. And this attack officially turns on his fatal push. And I'd like to think he needs to get that lord off the table. Oh yeah. Nice. Uh... Ooh. There we go. Now, I think, um, yeah, you definitely want to play Jade Light Ranger and then try to play the push. Oh, actually, this could, no, it's not really particularly good. It's going to hit the, yeah, the Lord, I'm guessing, but you're still a trade. Yeah, but I, I would have preferred to just use the Servant of the Conduit as a fatal push rather than the, um, the Eater Hub. Because now he has no mana for Jade Light Ranger. I would have even preferred to play Jade Light Ranger, try and find a swamp that I could play before using the Fatal Push. Yeah, he essentially took his entire turn there to cast Fatal Push. Also, I am being kicked and dropped. <clears throat> First my creature gets bounced, then it gets taken over, and the other ones have an unblockable Merfolk and a C4 Oracle. Fuck my life. <laughs> we see the um, Nick Peterson Fathom Lolo's just drawn a big card here, but I wouldn't have made that trade. Trades with the Trooper Cabra there, so you can't actually draw cards from Kamina now. Here we go, some Jade Light Ranger action. Yeah, 
And there you have it, mana fix, problem solved. If only you had done that a couple of turns, with, like if you had done that before the fatal push, that would have been awesome. I agree. Uh, do, does he attack with Kamina here? Yeah, Absolutely good. not. I want to draw cards right now. Yeah. I, mean, I want to rip another Merfolk right off the top right now. I would, have, would prefer to attack. I guess you could actually attack with Kamina to try and finish the game with a hash of Oasis turn afterwards. But that's kind of a really risky play. Also, I would tap at the end of opponents to when he plays a removal because well, I, I think he taps now because if it, if he did draw a creature he could have played it out and I don't yeah. I don't think that Cody's gonna swing an attack here when he's he's quite low because he, he would be facing lethal from Hashap Oasis if he doesn't have some sort of a response Just so. look at his hand oh, he now his mana his mana's looking a lot better this game this game could slip away pretty quickly for for fathom Oh, I am getting my ass kicked over here. Yeah. Oh, I don't... Man, I don't know if I would do this this way now. I think I'm... I think I'm in and get rid of one of those Veraska's Contempts. Oh, oh geez. Yeah, I, I think I would have taken Kamina there. Yeah, because did he just fatal push? What did he actually take with the two fatal pushes? The Q metallic. A... He took the metallic mimic. Ah, probably would have just gone for uh, Kumina there. I think that's the most likely. Because right now Kumina can actually swing for five here. Yeah? Yeah, I definitely like the free damage. Gotta go for it. Oh, he's drawing and again. he wants more cards. And it's gonna oh. cost five to cast. Well, I guess it's still kind of, kind of good. Yeah, it's a, it's another large body that Metallic Mimic's gonna do some work here. Plus he gets to draw a new card, which is just great. Ooh. Oh yeah, dangerous next turn now. Yeah, I think uh, Reign of Chaos has to play this pretty tight this turn. So he can play two spells this turn. No, he can't. I lie. One, two... Yeah, because he can't get the green energy. I think he needs to pop one of these Vraska's Contempts while the shields are down on the other side. Yeah, I think so too. I think keep blockers because it's getting dangerous. And he doesn't know that there's a Lord in hand, which is going to be really powerful. Yeah, that surprise fix could, might actually cost the game. Because right now, if Kimina survives... Yep, doing it main phase. Yeah, I guess it would be better to like do it in the other one's turn, but... So, we're going to be lining up some blocks that are not as effective as he would like, but I think he survives this turn. Let's see what the draw is. Oh, Jungle Born Pioneer, that's really good. Yeah, those are going to be two big bodies. Um, not 
not sure what that attack is. Yeah, definitely not sure about that. <laughs> Did he, he just forget to play as Mr. Binder? Guess so. This match has been interesting. Yeah, more because of the puns than because of the smart play. <laughs> I've been there before. Punting leads to more punting sometimes. You just got to take a deep breath and get back in the game. And he, he didn't play the Mist Binder at all for some reason. I don't know if I'm missing something there. And he took unnecessary damage there. No, I guess he wanted that. Chupacabra. So he's got a bit of width now. So it's kind of, this is reminiscent of the first game where it looks like he has stabilized. I definitely am actually quite liking um, the Soltai's position right now. On the other hand, a Kumina or an unblockable creature could mean the end. He runs the Lord out. You can see the revealed card there was the Chupacabra. He's got a Vraska's Contempt in hand. Did he put the Chupacabra in the grave? I wonder, do you attack here? Because your biggest creature will die, or probably Metallic Mimic will die. But I do like the other blocks, kind of. Yeah, I think he had lethal next turn if he went with that. He runs that Chupacabra out super fast. So the Mistbinder is not long for this world. I really like to have seen those Oasis get cracked and get some trample damage going and trade some cards and now it's just kind of getting out of control. Oasis itself does not actually give trample. I, I think he missed his opportunity. Well, would you look at that? Uh, with the Camino and the Oasis a few turns back. But w w one thing that seems to be pretty evident with this Merfolk deck is that it r seems to be leaning pretty heavily on Camino. Like without without the Camino, it doesn't look that fantastic. Yeah, I mean. I also play a Merfolk deck where you play the one, one blockable, the um, Deep Roots Elite, which is a great combo that can win you games. But it seems like he's not drawn any of them if he is playing them. Now I'm actually liking play, like activating two Haship Oasis and just swinging in. The top of Rain's deck is a lot better than the top of Fathom's deck at this point. Yeah, exactly. You know, I think though Fathom in numerous places here hasn't really demonstrated that he's prepared to be aggressive. Oh, okay, just as I say that. Alright, so we're going to rumble with the Jungleborn Pioneer. Are we going with anyone else? Yep, yeah, I probably would have sent one more there. Just to at least get a trait. Uh, that Merfolk. Stop sending stuff like that. Suicide Bombers. Yeah. They're going to have a hard time if they reach a division two and one. <sighs> Which 
shut up and be silent. Well, uh, Fathom's about to win because uh, Rain missed his blocks. Oh, I think that's because of the new skips. Yeah, there's something wrong with the skips that makes them skip blocks, which is kind of brutal. Yeah, so both these standard matches are decided by, um, I guess what you call X-Mage errors. Tapping yeah. the black, so Nick Peterson's going to take standard down two games to zero. Well, if what happened in if uh, he'd actually tapped his land to black in real life, a uh, judge call would have been made. That probably would have meant a loss for him as well. So. Yeah, I, I think that was just a he was not aware of the card rather than the program itself. Uh, just while they're getting ready for for modern, uh, are either of you guys going to be here to cover us modern and legacy? Yeah, definitely. But I am also going to be on duty because of draft. Yeah, because I'm heading out in about fifteen minutes. So, um, can I pass? I'll pass the. Oh yeah. I'll give you the streaming details so that you can load it into your OBS and continue the stream. Yeah, now I'm kind of hoping I lose this draft so I can properly do it. <laughs> because I can't actually stream Will's drafting because I need to constantly switch. Perhaps. Hmm. Well, I can do it after my draft is finished. Mm -hmm. Until then, it will be difficult to do. Problem is, I'm winning the second game, which means the third game. All right, I see the game's created. Yep. Hopefully they're fast getting in this time. It was about five minutes last time. Yeah, and I don't want to join myself. Like it's always like, oh yeah, let's join that game. Oh wait, no. Oh, wait, okay, so we're all set now. Yeah, he, uh, Nick Peterson asked me offline if um, in that situation they could use rollbacks. We just recommend to turn it off just for to avoid arguments and also because there was a bug in it at the time of writing those uh, that rule. The bug still affects my system. Um, but if the two of them agree, then there's no issue there. They can use the rollback. Yeah, yeah I'm personally more of the guy who tends to ro allow rollbacks. But, um, yeah, in, in that sort of situation, um, I mean, clearly he wanted to block, so yeah, you, you don't. Yes, when you're when you're sitting face to face with your opponent playing paper, you don't accidentally forget the block. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way yeah. to put it. If, if you tapped your mana wrong, then no, no rollback. But forgetting to block is. And that's one way I like to treat the league is is if it's something egregious where you would never ever do that in paper, um, you know the rollback is cool. But right now is like one of the worst times to join as a new player because I feel like X Mage is especially buggy with a lot of different things. But mostly rollbacks, especially if you have skips enabled, you just lock yourself out of the game. Yeah, and I definitely I kind of feel better okay. So someone's on burn. Uh, that's Nick Peterson at the top. He's on. No, sorry, um, 
Cody Topman at the bottom is on Burn. Nick Peterson at the top is on Merfolk. <laughs> so. What's this? How do you fix when one of your lands disappears in your hand? Uh, what does that mean? I see his two lands. Oh, I think probably what it means is like... Oh, um, the art. No, that you... Like, it's when it's lagging a lot, it sometimes l looks like the lands are coming back, like the northern player or something. But um, this is still turn one, right? Yeah. Yeah, like it's that you play the land, but then you don't play the land, and it's something real weird. Yeah, just just what Bob was saying before. It's um, particularly with the new players. We we I think a lot of the turnover in the past has been caused by the lousy X mage and it not functioning properly. This might actually be a pretty fast um, modern match. Burn versus Merfolk. Then, then we'll have to see if uh, Nick is going to play Merfolk in Legacy. Three Eidolons in hand is brutal. Oh, what? man, yeah. <laughs> Especially, yeah, against the Merfolk. <clears throat> the entirety of both of the decks is below that curve. Uh, it's really going to be a race. I actually interviewed um, Nick Peterson, Fathom Lolo, for the podcast. It's going to appear in, I think, week six. He's very good friends growing up with one of our d division players, uh, Devin Sowers. Devin got him into this into our league. Actually, something interesting just happened here. Eater Vial means that Eidolon isn't going to be that good. Yeah, that's a pretty pretty solid uh, observation, Eric. He's not going to get punished for casting things. Yep. So that means Eidolon is actually suddenly quite bad because the burn mech is going to try and cast a lot of stuff. So interesting. There the burn. Sorry. The, the burn deck will have a little bit of tempo though, um, because now the Murfolk deck is going to get punished if it wants to do two spells per turn. That is true enough. These uh, burn decks have largely gone away from green and attacker's command altogether now, haven't they? They just seem to be straight up red-white these days. Yeah, and um, not quite familiar with the history of burn. They also like having access to um, destructive revelry. It's a good catch-all and still keeps pushing damage. Main phase, barf. <laughs> I, I think he's he might have been thrown off by um, Cody fetching two basics there because normally they would fetch a white source with the second. You can see he's got Sacred Foundry in hand. But yeah, he, he could have almost caught him. If he, if he fetched the white saw second uh second instead of a basic mountain i think he would have tried to catch him with the curse uh with the vial on the curse catcher so uh this is an interesting turn here for reign of chaos let's see what the what line he takes the chaotic one That seems adequate. So this will enable him to push both creatures. Yeah, this is quite a big tempo swing actually.
And the other Eidolons are looking pretty decent now. He's ahead. I'm uh, I'm still not a big fan of the main phase stuff. Um, trying to figure that out. Oh my! Oh, this is gonna hurt. Yeah, this is not something. That's for six. Done. It's gonna put him down to six. Oh yeah. boy! Oh, that was See, never that's... done. That. <laughs> Uh, so Boros Charm is pretty safe here. Yeah, I mean, you cast Boros Charm, and you attack, which has to be blocked, and then uh, you can run out your other Eidolon and the game's over. Uh, I think he's going to go for the old ambush here. This is yeah, going to be yucky. I like, if this doesn't get blocked, it's game over. If it does get blocked, it's still brutal. Alright, good. He didn't give it indestructible. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I was going to say, I think he has to sack that Curse Catcher here. Just in case there is a something like an attacker's command that could push through the, the extra points of damage. Oh no, he was fine just letting that go. Oh no! Well, this enables him to still push the 4 and get the... Yeah, I think actually pushing through the 4 is more important. I think sacking the Curse Catcher was the correct play there. Probably, yes. Yes, I tricked my opponent into attacking his C4 Oracle into my snapping sail back. So uh, I think it's virtually impossible to beat Bone when they have 13 and you're at 2 life. Yeah, not sure how that's going to work out. Can just sit back behind a, an Eidolon here and the Aether Vial has to do everything for the rest of the game. Until you find a burn spell. <coughs> yeah, he only actually needs to play one Eidolon, so... This will enable him to draw a card, but it, I mean, it, it, the vial here, <laughs> and that's, that's what he draws. Take game one. And there it is, lightning bolt. Alright, so I don't know if I have it back up yet. I am still messing with things. Um, what a shot. So 
So YouTube's back up properly. And what do I have open? This is my first time messing with it. And I just heard myself, which is weird. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense then. I have the improper overlay for this, but such is life. Um, I'm, I'm catching up. I can actually modify it real quick. Um, overlay properties. This is Nick Peterson and Cody Totman, yes? Um, you try real hard. Uh, that's, that's a tough one. Alright, so I think I have myself set up to where everything looks like it's in order. Um, I'm just trying to copy some names and improve the stream settings a little bit. And do you recall which person was which? Topman's screen name. Um, I think he's Reign of Chaos, right? And Fathom. There we go. I can see their names. Yay! Okay, we're back in the game. Um, so the lightning helix the searing blaze, the deflecting palm, they're kinda, they're stuff. Well, this is going to face, it's gonna do some stuff.
Yeah, he's getting beat up pretty big here. Oh boy. <laughs> So Merfolk did Merfolk things there. Um, giving your creatures uh, essentially hexproof is pretty strong apparently. I guess if he draws the things that he needs, um, the Merfolk deck is looking pretty good. Um, but on the play here, I'm kind of feeling like, like Burn's going to run away. Just uh, a handful of gasoline on the merfolk side. Yeah, you don't want to forget about that one. I'll tell you, the... Uh, the Seize Claim could very well be relevant in this game depending on how Fathom wants to sequence. Um, you don't really know how often Burn's going to pull lands. I don't know if uh, if that's some tech that he knew was going to be good against Burn, or he was just finding any cards that were useful in the matchup. No, oh, he's ripping lands. This turn's going to hurt, but he's going to be able to get in some damage. Interesting. Based off of what's going on right now, um, Rain's hand is going to cause him eight damage. As is. Yeah, I think that's kind of been the theme for the match so far. Is we're, I think we're, we're we are officially experiencing a couple of newer players. Maybe these aren't their formats, and they're experimenting, and they're still learning the ins and outs and the timing. At this point, Rain is locked out of his own hand, 
which was going to cause him 8 damage anyways, so I'm kind of curious to see how this plays out. And he's still locked out. Well, I have a... I'm pretty pumped up right now. Reign of Chaos has balls of steel. He's just turning stuff sideways and saying, uh, I have tricks. Which he does not. Alright. Yeah, it's one of the primary advantages, being able to drop a creature down in the middle of combat and kind of skew things. Um, but regardless of, of the use of Aether Vial, um, I think the story is, as awkward as it sounds, um, he's going to get locked out of this game. Um, Rain is, or actually. Um, he is going to be able to get a white source back. Um, this is a really big turn right now. Like a lightning helix would have been a little more advantageous in this situation to kind of clean up the board and gain him some life back. But, uh... The... So if he deflecting palms, yeah, there's there's no combination of cards here that gets him out of this. Um, he deflecting palms a three, but he's still got five damage. What is hat white? Okay, he's tapped it. He's just screwed. This game just got away. Spell Pierce for the lulls. So what does Legacy have in store for us? That is what I want to know. I think there might actually be Legacy Merfolk, to be honest. Um, as in it is a deck, is it a good deck or a metagame appropriate deck? I don't know about all that. But for new players, um, it's not the weirdest thing to see them just sleeve up something that they're comfortable with. Because uh, sometimes a decent modern deck uh, can beat a legacy deck if a pilot is, is not sure what they're doing. Well, hopefully we're not looking at like a Grixis mirror where these guys are, you know, brainstorm locking themselves or anything crazy. Hopefully they, they go for something fun and quick. Let's see some reanimating. Let's see some sneak attacking. Let's, let's see something crazy and fun.
yeah I think sneak attack is is one of the the early decks okay so we've got show and tell um, fathom is on reanimator and show and tell for rain rain is on the play um, he has no way to gas out his show and tell as of right now um, but the cool thing is um, no no counter magic to be seen screw all that nonsense let's just get down to business and I have to feel like we're gonna ponder here Look at the top three. Put it back in any order. Shuffle if you don't like it. Draw a card. Yeah, it's, it's a card that people play from time to time. He topped all three. Top, top, top. I hope he clicked them in the right order. Okay, we got a Lotus Petal. So we're going to get a turn two show and tell out of uh, Reign of Chaos on the bottom here. Um, all right, yeah, show and tell is, is a turn two option. Um, over on the other side, what do we have here? We can unmask. We can, okay, we're going to fade this loot. Yeah, he's, he's in our reanimator up top. Fathom is. Absolutely. Ooh. Chance for the Annex. Grizzle. Uh, nothing happening turn one here, but the unfortunate thing of what's going on right now... Um, actually, it's not unfortunate. Um, Animate Dead's going to come out of... Actually, no. It's, that's, it is an enchantment. He can play that, right? Off of Show and Tell? Yep, Artifact Creature Enchantment. So we are going to have a Grizzlebrand come in for Reign of Chaos and most likely a Grizzlebrand off of um, Animate Dead from Fathom. It's going to be a Grizzlebrand Showdown. If, if Reign so chooses. And he does. <laughs> so Fathom cannot successfully attack his own Grizzlebrand into Rain's Grizzlebrand because it has Neg 1. Neg 1 oh, which may or may not be relevant. He brought back the Chancer of the Annex, looking to slow him down. Um, maybe Fathom is thinking that he can just exhume next turn anyways, or animate dead anyways. And then he can slow him down moving forward. Uh, so he can slow down Rain moving forward with the counter ability on Chancellor. Um, but I don't know, I think I would have got the Grizzlebrand and tried to go off this turn. And he ripped the land, so actually, yeah, it feels bad, bro. Super job. So each player puts a creature card from their graveyard into play. Unfortunately, Reign of Chaos has none. And by unfortunately, I mean by design. And we have a Live and Well Grizzlebrand. And he is drawing cards. He is going to do stuff. Um, got a Thought Seize. Lotus Petal. Um, nothing really of consequence that's going to win him the game on the spot. I think there's value in Thought Seizing right now to figure out what's going on on the other side. Um, but he's going to Faithless Loot. Um, I 
All right, so we ditched the Chancellor and another Grizzle brand. And we're reanimating another chance. Oh boy. And we paid a lot of life for that too. Oh boy. Okay. So players are settling in. Um, that was unfortunate. And he said he's done that twice now. And we're drawing cards. Into what? I don't know. Yeah, I, th I think that's what he's looking for. Um, he can get he can get a uh, a sneak attack resolved here if he so chooses. He's having none of that. There's a fairly good chance that he gets he he digs for Emmercruel. He could find um, find that and probably like another Lotus Petal, another Accelerant, and, and really get things going. Um, but he's choosing to extend this game for I don't know what reason. Well, we're making the assumption that he's seen it. Um, right now, I, I guess you plow plow something into uh, why did he tap mana for Lotus Petal? What is happening? Every or the first? I'm still pretty confident that Ran and Chaos is going to be able to fight through the Chancellor and, and win this game. Unless we get something crazy out of Fathom. All right, he is moving to discard with five bajillion lands.
Alright. Flusterstorm, Sync Attack Rosebrand, Show and Tell, Brainstorm. Some lands. And Animate Dead, some other stuff. Yep, that block earlier was essentially free. No harm, no foul. or players are discussing how neither one of them is really familiar with <laughs> with legacy so that's fun I've been experimenting with the no spells deck that's all creatures that sideboards into Belcher a lot of fun All right, so we got a force of will. It's a little late, late to the party. So I think we are going to be hanging out and just doing show and tell, which is going to bring out another Chancer of the Annex. It is not legendary. Oh, we're doing sneak attack. Maybe he's planning on using sneak attack defensively. Oh my, I don't know what's happening. All right, so I don't really see a line here that's beneficial because on the crackback, he'll be taking exactly 10. All right, so we're most likely going to game two unless Fathom doesn't attack. I, I don't know. Oh, boy. Hmm, that was an interesting line. He's he's also um, Fathom has another exhum in hand. Um, I don't. I just don't know about that one. So, Reign of Chaos lives through this turn, and. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to say that with the combination of spells he currently has, he's just going to top deck Emmercrawl and win. Exactly like he scripted it up, because we don't know what we're talking about.
I I don't think that's actually going to happen, but um Well, well what the <coughs> Okay, we're for so willing. Oh, and he got rid of the fluster storm. And Fathom can go for Exhum, which can be countered by Spell Pierce. Oh, he doesn't have any mana at all. Yeah, disregard. Yeah, you can't even attack now, so our sequencing is slightly off. Um, roll the dice here. I have no idea what's going to happen. Okay, we're drawing cards. I it, it, That's where we're at right now, as he needs to rip an Ember Crawl off the top. or uh, Yeah, that, that should be game. We got Ember Crawl. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven permanents. Yeah, we're, uh, victory is imminent here. Yeah, that was, that was an unfortunate plot twist. Are these guys aware that they're, uh, I realize we're in their game hanging out today. Are they fully aware that we're streaming them? So Cody and Nick, if you happen to watch back, um, and rewatch the stream, um, don't worry. You guys are in the new players league. You got some time to learn. Um, both of you are new to Legacy, all as well. Um, so far, cumulati cumulatively, I'll say that uh, you should be using Aether Vial on your opponent's turn, if at all possible. Yeah, that, that's a big one. We don't want to get the, the double legendary thing going. Um, Yeah, that's that's really what it's going to come down to is if they cumulatively, um, you know, they learn from their mistakes and they grow, they're going to be much different players by the end of the season. Um, work their way out of the new players league and, and get in the mix in the larger portion of the league. Um, it's only week one. Nothing to worry about. So we do have the craft diggers. Um, Fathom. I believe Rain um, is going to be on the play. Um, really nothing going over... Oh, Fathom. Fathom needs to use this unmask right now, and he doesn't even know it. Oh, that's yucky.
so between the Graf Digger's Cage, the Blood Moon, the Sneak Attack, and the Force Will, um, I, I am going to go ahead and say that Rain of Chaos is the early favorite in this in this game right now. His one out was to, to use that on a mask on turn one, and, and unfortunately he didn't know that. Um, but but hopefully he'll learn. Um, you just got to rip that. I mean, Fathom, Fathom already knows that he's not in good shape right now. We're talking about getting to, to turn 8 to hard cast Emrakul, which is not even a thing. And he said he has one or prop decay. So it looks like with that concession, Rain won the match 2-0. to 0. So that was uh, an interesting journey that we just went on. Um, as we said, there were, there were some mistakes made, but uh, even through um, a bunch of mistakes, somebody's going to win and somebody's going to lose, and this is the official start to the new Players League for these two players, and, and hopefully they learn and hopefully they get better. Yep, and as you said, uh, it sounds like you pretty much started Legacy because of the league, and, and I'm really in the same boat. Um, and it's a format where in the beginning you're extremely afraid of, you're intimidated, and you start playing it a bit, and you realize uh, it's not it's not as bad. So you're not able to see the screen that I'm about to share with people, but I mentioned the all spells uh, deck that I was messing with in Legacy. Um, it actually top aided an event recently. Um, it may have been a classic. Um, so that's what what kind of helped me notice it. But you know, just just sharing with everyone, um, the very first time I played this deck on my very first turn one, I won on the spot. Um, which is insane, but uh, you know, essentially you get out some mana fixing stuff uh, between the Lotus Petals and the Chromox. You have your selfless or your Elvish Spirit Guides and your Simeon Spirit Guides to uh, to get you some mana as well. You have a Tinder Wall. Um, pretty much, you Summoner's Pack for your Wild Cantor. You use the Wild Cantor to um, gain some additional mana and that unlocks um, a dark ritual, um, a cabal ritual and a few other things to kind of daisy chain your, your mana together to accelerate you. Um, and eventually you get out either the Balistrad Spy or the Undercity Informer, which when they enter the, the battlefield, you mill your entire deck. Um, the card says you you Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a land. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a great way to, to, to turn the deck over. Um, and when you do that, when you mill your entire deck, uh, whatever narco amoebas that you don't have in your hand get milled from your deck and they go into play. Uh, you're, you're one of, yep, you're one of Dread Return comes in. And then you have several choices. Um, also, your one of Bridge from Below comes out, and you end up getting more creatures from that. 
but you use the Dread Return to sacrifice the Narco Amiibos, and depending on what's in your hand, you might want to bring out your Laboratory Maniac, which says that if you draw a card and you have no cards in your library, you win. So if you happen to have Street Wraith in hand, you can immediately draw a card and win. Yep. Azami. So this this version that I played is the more modern version. Um, I think I like the older version better, but the difference is this version has a main deck bridge from below, and it also has a main deck Underworld Cerberus. And Underworld Cerberus says that cards and graveyards can't be the target of spells or abilities, and when it dies, you get, you exile it, and each player returns all creatures they control from the graveyard to their hand. So if you had extra black mana floating, you want to use something like a Cabal uh, Ritual. Um, actually, which one was it? It wasn't the Cabal Ritual. Um, yeah, Cabal Ritual. Um, you want to sacrifice the Underworld Cerberus and then uh, to look at your, your opponent's hand. And then you get all your creatures back, including all your spirit guides. And you can kind of just like rinse and repeat, which is kind of like overkill to me. Um but yeah, I, I don't like the the Underworld Cerberus uh, package. I, I think I'd rather use the one that you were using with uh, with the Zami. Um, it's just a more clean way to do it. Yeah, yeah. But this is something I, I would like to mess with. Um, and the sideboard is essentially you're sideboarding into Char Belcher. Four Char Belchers, Char Belchers, three Seething Songs, two Pyretic Rituals, four Lion's Eye Diamonds, and. Uh, you're literally just like, if they're if they're trying to do something extreme with like graveyard hate, and you're like, okay, that's fine. I'll just use my deck the same way, but on a different angle. So, the the lure of the deck is to win on turn one. Um, if your opponent doesn't have counter magic, and if they do, if you have Pact of Negation in hand, um, you know, they kind of get screwed. But the deck mulligans so aggressively, um, and it is unforgiving. If you don't have the nut on, like, you know, five, six, or seven cards, you're pretty much just losing. Yeah. Um, it actually doesn't have that in the deck. Uh, what it does have is Gataxian Probe and Street Wraith to kind of search around for stuff, but yeah, it's not very forgiving at all, at least in this version. Well, our match is over. We discussed the deck real quick. And uh, I think I'm going to go um, bump around and do some stuff around the house. So it was uh, nice hanging out with you, Eric. And uh, for, for anyone that may or may not be watching out there, uh, thank you for for spending some time with us. And uh, continue to turn in when you see the, uh, or tune in when you see the league matches up. Um, we'd love to, to draw some attention to the league, regardless if it's our primary divisions or our, our new uh, new players, any of that stuff. Just uh, if you see us on, just tune in, spend some time with us, and uh, we'll catch you next time. S see you later, Eric.